Hello and welcome back once again to Benny's Alternate Universe. I am your host Benny. We are in a place where we talk about tapes, rock and roll, guitars, um, stagecraft, album covers, things of that nature. Um, I just wanted to print a, I guess, a correction from last show, which is, uh, you know, I mentioned my band, and I did not mention the name of the band, Reality Bomb, Reality Bomb, and I also do, do not know if it was clear that, um, you know, Reality Bomb is a band that I am a member of. I was fortunate enough to be able to join this band about uh, a year and a half ago, give or take, and um, I am not, you know, it's not my band per se. I do contribute just like all the band members contribute, but I'm more like the Ronnie Wood of Reality Bomb, which is a position I really, you know, enjoy being in. But um, it's also very appropriate because tonight we're going to talk about one of my favorite bands and one of Reality Bomb's favorite bands and favorite influences, the mighty Rolling Stones in their 1977 live album, Love You Live. Um, before I get into it, I just want to say that I don't think this is their greatest live album. That would be the almighty Get Your Yaya's Out with the master Mick Taylor on lead guitar, my personal favorite Stones guitarist. Uh, I happen to get this awesome copy of it in bulk trash. Somebody just chucked this, beautiful, no molds, a little, you know, a little wear on the corner. I didn't lose any sleep over it. Snoop tried to tear it up. Snoop is in here with me, by the way. Blanket is banned from this room because he's been urinating on a lot of stuff. It's not cool. Um, so yeah, Love You Live. I mean, what a great album, you know? This album, I feel like, isn't nearly as well known as Get Your Yaya's and also I have it on tape. So, you know, the show is mainly about tape. So we're gonna talk about this double tape double play down there can we wrong way double play okay stones records logo very cool cover this was done by andy warhol and uh later on mick jagger actually wrote in the words here rolling stones love you live and and warhol got pissed about it and i think that would have been a, a really funny tiff to be a witness to um warhol and jagger going back and forth about this cover this album covers the Stones uh, 74 and 75 tour, I believe, and also some 76 dates from Toronto, which were a really big deal in Stones history because it was during that time when they were preparing for those secret club dates at El Combo that um, Keith got busted with a large amount of heroin and cocaine, and it was a real big story that all Stones fans are familiar with, I'm sure. So, Mick Taylor's out, Ronnie Wood's in. We all love Ronnie Wood. He seems like such a lad, you know? Even though he stole Rod Stewart's hairstyle, as I read in Rod Stewart's book in the chapter about his hair. <laughs> and, um, he, they were in Faces together, which was a, another great British pub rock, pure rock band. Um, definitely worth checking out if you haven't heard them already. So he really gets to show off, you know, what he was up to and what he was bringing to the table with the band. Another cool thing about this album is that it includes some cuts from their lesser known and less loved albums that came after Exile, namely Goat's Head Soup, It's Only Rock and Roll, and Black and Blue. And I think that might be it. I think um, this came out after... Black and Blue? I don't know. I can't remember the order. I know it was Goat's Head first, and then I think only Rock and Roll. But anyway, and then Some Girls came out after this. Those songs are hit or miss, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The overall feel of this album is raw, a lot of energy. Love the sound on this album. It's just got a nice, warm, kind of brash 70s sound. Uh... Mixed performance is real spirited. You know, sometimes it gets a little a little cheeky, I would say. And you know how Mick does it sometimes with his 
with his phrasing. Um, he does do a little talking to the crowd in French, which is cool, you know, for uh, for the pair of states on side one and two, I believe, or side one of the cassette. And um, but uh, overall, the playing is really good, really fires. Keith plays excellent. Um, a lot of, I, I would say, you know, fire in his playing. Of course, the rhythm section is always great. Can always count on Charlie Watts and Bill Wyman. And Ronnie is, he's great. He's no Mick Taylor, but uh, I don't mean that, you know, as a diss. It just, Mick Taylor's playing was so soulful, fluid, whatever you want to call it. He just had a very unique style of playing that was also like really intuitive and not it wasn't unique by being weird it was it was just he had something real special about his lead playing but I do love Ronnie Woods playing too so let's not get it twisted honky tonk women is very upbeat um, if you can't rock me get off my cloud medley I love Get Off My Cloud, so even though I think it's cool that there's like this different setting for it and um, whatever, I would have rather heard the actual, a, a little more faithful recreation of the album version. Happy is killer. Hot Stuff, this is a problem area for me. Hot Stuff drags a little bit, and this is a problem that you, could, you get into when you're in a band playing jams and trying to play rock and roll jams. Hot Stuff was never my favorite Stones tune to begin with. But it just kind of drags out a little long in the jam department. And then it's followed right up by Starfucker, which is awesome. You know, so it does redeem itself quickly. Tumbling Dice is pretty straight. Fingerprint Files has suffers from that same fate. That I thought it was cool that there was going to be a, a deep cut like Fingerprint File. But they didn't really do anything with it that was making me, you know, it's getting my yayas out. You Gotta Move, on the other hand, is a sick version that's that's very gospel and, and just super soulful and raw, and it's an electric version as opposed to the Sticky Fingers version we all remember and love, but um, way cool version of You Gotta Move. And I think the version of You Can't Always Get What You Want is very cool too, even though it's maybe not as impassioned as the album version um, on mixed part. It's just a song you hear so many times. Sometimes you take for granted how great of a song it really is. So when you hear it in a new setting, or for me, you know, when I hear it with a different kind of groove like that, it's cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, that's another thing that can go both ways when you have a band that's into experimenting with the same song in a different settings. And we're going to talk about some Bob Dylan later in the week, and we're going to talk about... Jimi Hendrix, you know, people who also were into that kind of improvisation. Now, when we get to side two, this is when it really starts to heat up. Side one is cool, but in a lot of ways I feel like it would be a typical stone show at that time. Side two, what would be side three of the LP, is the small club El Macombo performance, and it is a ripper. Manish Boy... Cracking Up is a killer like ska reggae cover. Little Red Rooster, round and round. It's just um, such a great one, two, three, four punch of old school blues and rock and roll, and they really deliver a good, great energy on all four of those tracks. What I would assume, because I never had this on vinyl, is side three, is probably the side that has the most wear universally worldwide <laughs> there's probably you know it's probably record two has definitely got more wear but side three in particular is probably just no more grooves left because it's so awesome um side four is where they essentially bring out the encore it's only rock and roll brown sugar jumping jack flash is a very aggressive version and the riffs really jump out. They're really pounding those riffs on uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash. It's really good. A really good version of Sympathy for the Devil closes it out. Overall, I'd say this is an excellent Stones live album. Um, the sound, you know, once again, it's just really warm, vintage amps, tube amps, um, you know, 
there's there's not a lot of bells and whistles with the stones we do hear some backup vocals that are actually tasteful and cool we do hear some cool keyboards uh, I believe there may be some harp coming out on Manish Boy via Mick Jagger but there's this is if you love the Rolling Stones you definitely like this tape you know it's not it's not for the as much for the casual Stones fan because this covers a lot of ground not everybody's aware of the Stones interest in reggae or in funk or in you know whatever fingerprint file is so <laughs> um, cool listen I, I, I would rank this number two among Stones live albums directly after Get Your Yaya's Out and before Got Live if you want it I don't even know if I would put Got Live third I don't, I don't really like the sound too much on that record I love the songs from that era but I was never really a Brian Jones fan, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know he was a big writer for them, I think. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Did he write a lot of their stuff, or did he just, like, play the sitar? See, I, there's, Stone's legacy is long. <laughs> I love the songs of that era, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is the classic... Beggar's Banquet, Let It Be, Sticky Fingers, Exile. And um, this is an extension of that period. They weren't as good as they were on Get Your Eyes Out, but they were still goddamn good. Excellent rock and roll band. I would also give this, just like I did to David Johansson Group, an 8. I think this is a real, real classic live album. The more I listen to it, the more I like it. Um... It's, it, it touches a lot of bases, you know? There's beautiful rock ballads, like you can't always get what you want. There's really a lot of a lot of classic Stones tunes, some of them in new versions, and there's a lot of cool deep cuts, and there's a whole side of really cool old school covers, which the Stones are so good at, and uh, which, if you're a Stones fan, you, you know, that's one of the reasons we love them, is, is because they dust off those old chestnuts that are so much fun to hear like Manish Boy and Round and Round. So with that and with no further ado, I would like to say um, thank you for joining me for this period of time and I hope you, you get a chance to check out Rolling Stones Love You Live. Kick back, close your eyes, do what you do, have a cup of coffee and um, just imagine that you're there. Because we, we can't go to a lot of concerts right now, but we can listen to our live tapes. And there's going to be more live tape reviews to come here on Benny's Alternate Universe. Thank you.